fair to say that the original intent of the Constitution is to define a government that serves the general population, the middle of the bell-shaped curve, now known as the middle class. Do you sense a dwindling middle class or a wealth disparity? Well, I think things are changing right now. I think the last, uh, the last eight years have been uh, uh, increasing, increasing wealth disparity, but I think some of the excesses of those days uh, may be over. The terms spreading the wealth, redistribution, and wealth disparity are meaningless in an America that truly responds to the original intent of the Constitution. The proper function of government is not to provide, but to protect. Because if you're going to provide for some, you must have the authority and the power to take from others. And once you're in that business of taking from some and giving to others, now you're in the business of redividing the wealth. And that gives you tremendous power over, over the citizenry. And it always leads to abuse of power and eventually to totalitarian regimes. Many have commented that we now have a monstrous tax system, a system that taxes its citizens far more than citizens of the Boston Tea Party era. If two to three percent taxation justified a revolution in 1776, why doesn't 50 percent and growing justify a revolution? If a few little excise taxes on pieces of paper and tea justified open lawlessness from these rebels that we're all celebrating, why don't the myriad of incomprehensible, unavoidable, crushing taxes, state, local, and federal, why don't they justify a revolution today? Our government not only taxes us at every transaction, it's in our faces at every turn, endlessly regulating what we can and cannot do. All these regulating laws and their expensive enforcement programs are turning us into a police state. policemen of the world. So instead of a government now that uh, occupies so many other countries and we have 700 bases overseas, that wouldn't happen if we had the proper size government. Over 50 percent of U.S. citizens now work for the government at either the federal, state, or local level. Understand the orders you are taking right now are unconstitutional. Yes. Understand right now what you guys are doing here today will play effect throughout history. The Germans listen to their orders. The Germans violated their civil rights, God given rights, and not determining the authorities by simply listening to unconstitutional orders and not questioning authority. We are here because we mean no harm to you. We are tired of these private federal reserve bankers who are running this country and destroying this country from the inside. The tyranny that they commit, they commit it against you and your The nefarious genius of cultural Marxist strategy is to destroy the family unit by promoting what's known in the field of botany as androgyny. From the American College Dictionary, androgyny means, quote, having staminate and pistillate flowers in the same inflorescence, being both male and female, hermaphroditic, end quote. Translated into cultural Marxist strategy, this means making the father and mother of a family the same and or reversing their roles. How is this done? Well, it starts with invalidation. I hate this house and I don't want to be here anymore. As previously discussed, one of the key technologies of the Frankfurt School is critical theory. 
Recall the purpose of critical theory is to instill cultural pessimism. Thus, by endlessly portraying fathers as dominant, restrictive, depersonalized, and controlling, the cultural Marxist is able to invalidate the male component of the family unit. Concomitant with this, by endlessly portraying mothers as schizophrenic, nagging, anxious, the cultural Marxist is able to invalidate the female component of the family unit. This two-punch invalidation, endlessly repeated in the general literature, movies, and media, gives rise to a pessimistic attitude towards the traditional family. After time, this pessimism becomes imbued into the culture. That's why it's said the product of critical theory is cultural pessimism. The message of cultural pessimism. One, families are boring, stifling, and intrusive. Two, mothers and fathers suck. Three, divorce is therefore understandable and justified. With divorce made understandable and justified, even laughingly made easy by calling it no fault, one out of two nuclear families now disintegrate into chaos. Most contracts, the court system tries to sustain the contract. If you and I are doing business together and uh, they're trying to protect that contract because the contract was entered into in good faith for good principles. However, although the marriage might have been entered into in good faith, by breaking that, they can put a lot of people to work. Not only the, uh, the marital courts can go to work, they're also the social workers that go to work. There's also a whole team of people, including the IRS, who prey off of them. And one court in Massachusetts says, we're gonna bring this father to his knees and take all of his money from him. So there's a whole movement by the courts to make money off the dissolution of marriage. After the mother and the father are finally done arguing or negotiating over custody of the children and possession of the assets, two new family homes are usually established. He lives here and she lives there. Each new household economy now has to have a redundant, otherwise superfluous set of rent or mortgage payments energy and utility demands, and household furnishings and accoutrements. Extensive and complex scheduling of child visitation then must be established. If the divorce was acrimonious and or the children were traumatized by it, and most are, both parents vie for the children's attention and visitation. As they do this, knowingly or unknowingly, they spoil the children with unending material gifts, junk food, sugar, unearned validation, and parental supervision so lenient it borders on gross negligence. Divorce is a dreadful for children. And now you have uh, some families, probably the weakest and the, and the poorest, mostly black families that are now over uh, 50 and even 60% in divorce, which is critical uh, for the children. But worst of all, children are usually shipped off to daycare centers and or public schools where they are then handled like animals in captivity. Now we're talking about a, a school system that's teaching values that's determined not by the, by the parents, not even by the teachers, but by the political uh, groups that provide the funding, the politicians, the bureaucrats, the, the uh, think tanks, all the these invisible uh, structures above. Now, those are the people who are determining the values that are being taught in our schools. The profligate cultural Marxist society that causes and tolerates this then imposes pharmaceutical drugs on these children. Certainly the arts have always had a tendency uh, to promote license instead of liberty. The difference between license means that I can do anything, if it's, even if it's destructive uh, of other people and, and of myself. I can take drugs until I OD. I can uh, hurt other people uh, and hurt their children and families. Uh, license is something that is selfishness rules. With liberty, what rules is the freedom to be responsible, the freedom to live a, 
decent life, the freedom to love others, the freedom to give. It's like the difference between love and lust. And unfortunately,